Good day, everyone. Well, uh, we're seeing that the uh, markets are attempting um, to move higher out of this uh, consolidation. Uh, while the number of distribution days uh, remains uh, somewhat high, we have more importantly uh, positive action on the part of leading stocks, which uh, have expressed themselves through numerous um, actionable uh, buy points over the last several days. And uh, therefore, uh, we remain um, alert and vigilant to the possibilities of upside um, breakout. Uh, the NASDAQ looks, looks right now um, that, the, uh, that the, it is, it is attempting <laughs> to move higher here. Um, everything's right about flat. Uh, but um, most importantly, I, I wanted to get to uh, talking about some of these stocks that uh, look qu quite interesting. Um, Let's start with, uh, let's see here, there we go. Let's try with uh, this, uh, Matt H is, um, had a, had a uh, pocket pivot, and uh, then it had an earnings report, and it reversed on huge volume. So uh, the reason I point this out is because, you know, these pocket pivots, of course, uh, need to be handled just like any other buy point. Um, what we're seeing here is possible stabilization of the stock. But that's a really ugly reversal. Uh, so I would rather have my money deployed into um, a stock such as, uh, see here, I'm going to actually do these in order. But this is a good one. Um, H-A-R. So this one um, had a pocket pivot four days ago, which we reported on, and uh, it continues to move higher. So it's doing everything uh, about right. The uh, fundamentals, of course, it passed all our screens, um, so it is uh, it was actionable. Now it's extended, um, but uh, obviously, in this kind of market environment, you still have to be vigilant about taking your profits in context with uh, the uh, overall markets and in context with the chart itself. Uh, but uh, so far, you know that one is doing the right things. Um, then we have this airline stock, JetBlue, um, JBlue that uh, has been uh, obeying its 50-day uh, very well, and um, it had a pocket pivot, so it looks like it could continue uh, this nice uptrend. Uh, the price of oil, um, pull up that chart here, as use a USO, um, it's the oil fund. So you can see that it's, it's, test, it's tested the lows twice, uh, rather it's recently tested the lows, undercut it, and then now is bouncing. So the question is, um, has oil really found its low, and um, com commodities overall look like they're ch tracing out a similar pattern. So the question would be, um, is demand out of China and in these major countries, global market, is it the demand sufficient to, um, to push the price of oil higher? Well, based on the action of central banks around the world, the answer probably is no, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the price of oil in the, the basket of commodities uh, head lower again. Um, I don't necessarily think this downtrend is over because certainly uh, central banks are struggling to print all this money to uh, resuscitate the global economy and there still is not sufficient evidence to say that uh, we've really turned a corner. So until we see that sufficient evidence or it's something, something taking place that's uh, very fundamental, I think, um, and of course technical because the technicals will uh, tell us what we need to do, uh, I think uh, these, uh, the, the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, finding below remains suspect at best. Um, but fortunately, we've got other companies uh, that are doing well in this uh, in, in environment. Um, we have also this MNK. Let's see. I think that is the one that, uh, yeah. Um, now that one uh, had a pocket pivot off its 50-day. And uh, right now it's struggling right at the 50-day line. Um, at the latest, of course, you should be selling this one if it violates the 50. But that said, with the, the number of other stocks that are doing fairly well, you might not want to even have your money in, in this if it can't really rebound uh, more quickly. Um, it's struggling here. So, you know, maybe give it, give it a day. But if, it's, if it heads lower, I don't think I'd be waiting for a violation of the 50-day, um, uh, especially with the, uh, let's see, with stocks like, uh, oh, there's this one. TSCO, and uh, this one also had a pocket pivot, and it's uh, breaking out. Um, 
had an earnings report, and uh, so we'll see where it goes. But uh, there's a few stocks like that that are um, doing sufficiently well. Um, we also have the, uh, the one we talked about a number of times, PANW, and uh, this uh, Powell Alta Networks company um, had a pocket pivot breakout. Uh, breakouts often don't work, but when they're out of a constructive formation, uh, sometimes they will go higher, especially with the markets. If the market NASDAQ can break out of here definitively out of its uh, beyond its 5,000 resistance level, uh, this stock will probably follow uh, right along with it. Um, let's see, we had a couple more in here. Uh, we had uh, SKX, which is worth talking about. This was from uh, yesterday, and. Uh, we, uh, we reported on this one, and uh, it had an earnings report, and um, as you can see, it's gapping higher today. So, um, you know, pocket pivots uh, have done their job uh, sufficiently well here, getting you into the position before uh, the big move. Um, and let's see, one last one. Let's do one last one. Uh, let's do this one, cyber. Interesting story behind the stock. Um, it looks like it wants to move higher. It certainly has a lot of upside momentum, very strong, powerful uh, earnings um, and sales. Uh, the acceleration is very strong. Um, the issue with the pattern is that it's, it's uh, rounded out a bit quick, uh, then it had a, a gap up there here. And so um, because this is a bit of a sharper acceleration, um, I would give it some porosity if it, uh, if it needs it. You know, and also, of course, in the face of a market that might have a day or two of weakness, if this stock, if this stock um, breaks below the low of the gap up, uh, I would give it a little bit of porosity in that context. Of course, if the markets are off to the races and they're going higher and this one is not moving, um, then I would also be a bit impatient and maybe only keep half the position. But uh, the story is good and um, I think the upside potential on uh, Cyber, cyber Arc software um, is quite quite high. And uh, with that, I uh, will turn it over to Gil. Yeah, I think on um, cyber earnings are coming out week after next, I believe. And so, you know, the way I look at this is the place to be buying it was along the 50-day on the pullbacks in here. You had one, two, three. Third one was a charmer, and you come off of here. You get a pocket pivot here. We put out a report on that, and you can see when you had that pocket pivot, um, you ran up and then you pull into the 10 day and you dry up so you could have bought it right here as well so there's a couple of buy points lower in the pattern that I think are much lower risk if you look at the weekly chart uh, you're gonna notice there is no handle so I know somebody's babbling about a 6305 or something buy point for the stock on the base break and I guess you could look at these as little kind of cup with handle breakouts but there is no real handle in here on the weekly chart and so I would tend to think Dr. Kenny weren't we talking about this yesterday as being a little bit straight up off the bottom uh, because you yeah, haven't absolutely. had a week where you pulled back to actually build a good handle right exactly yeah but it needs more the pattern needs a little bit more work that's why uh, with this uh, gap up um, the gap up is you know, if you put some money into the gap up, it's okay, but do give the stock some room to move around because you can see it's quite volatile and it needs to settle down perhaps before it really can uh, break out to, to new highs. Yeah, and it's 30% above, like over 30% above the 50-day moving average, and I think it's in a place where it needs to probably rest. So we'll see what happens after earnings, but, you know, that all comes down to whether you want to play earnings roulette. If you, if you bought the stock much lower and you've got a 15 20% profit on the position, then you could probably look at just holding it through earnings. So, and speaking of earnings, you had Facebook come in, and it can't decide what it wants to do. It sold off down about 82 after hours yesterday, and then this morning opened up uh, closer to 84 and ran up above 85, and now it's kind of hopping and bopping around. You know, the real question for me, if we look at a weekly chart on Facebook, is what's going to cause this thing to have a huge run up from here? I mean, it could just continue to trundle its way higher, nice and slow and steady, and uh, just kind of keep moving higher that way. And I'm just wondering whether you get any acceleration, because I'm always looking for a big acceleration that I can play. I like to move in cyber off the 50-day moving average. That's a great example of something 
I like to play heavy, uh, but the only problem with that is I can't margin it. It's like I'll come in and buy 2,500 shares, which is usually my minimum uh, order size in, in terms of the blocks that I'll buy as I'm building my position. So I usually do a couple of clicks to get started and buy 5,000 shares. And I, I buy 2,500 and like $500,000 of my buying power disappears, which to me seems kind of ridiculous. I know some of you have tweeted me back that, uh, there are other places where it is marginable, but it, it's an Israeli stock, so I'm not sure if there's special considerations based on that. But that's the one thing that's kind of ticked me off about cyber, uh, is that it's unmarginable, and so I haven't been able to really play it like I would normally want to play something like that. But that's the type of move that I think works best in this market. So Facebook, you know, going higher, hanging out, is this going to be a breakout? You're looking at a little flag sort of breakout here off the 10-week line, so you know, back to the top of the base. Maybe it's had enough time to build a base, and in the process, you know, if you think that everybody's long the stock and it's over-owned, so what you need to do as you're building a base is get rid of the weaker hands and bring in stronger hands. And so the process of going sideways for a period of time serves to achieve that, and that may send the stock higher from uh, here. So, you know, it's hanging out. It's not really getting anything going on the earnings uh report so I'm not really sure what to make of that this morning. Uh, Twitter is another feeble one. I think they came out with earnings next week. It's trying to, you can see the big base you know, after it came public had a run up here and it's trying to round about in this uh, kind of cup with handle so it's trying to cut this a big old ugly structure and it's putting in some time so you can't really say that this looks bad. On the, on the daily chart it's just kind of doing nothing. So if you want to say it's failed on this breakout, eh, you know, kind of like difference between hand, gren hand grenades and hydrogen bombs, you know, both achieve the same basic purpose within a certain radius, and I think you're in that zone here. Um, and so it's not clear to me where this thing goes. Um, I'll tell you where I, where I am right now. Um, Mobileye. I like this move. I like this. I've been watching this for a while, and you got a lot of uh, buying off the lows, and then you got some ants in here, which is telling you it's pretty strong off the lows. There are a number of other factors. If you look at the, not sure if this will come up. Let's go. Oh, I know what I have to do. Remove the filter. And it's had the three uh, bingo bars or the oversold bars in the pattern here. The third one occurred here near the very absolute lows, actually. And you're coming up the right side. Earnings don't come out till the end of May, May 28th. I know some people have said it's April 28th, but I think it is actually May. So then uh, that's what it's showing here, and that's also what Briefing.com shows. I think Market Smith shows 428, but for some reason they are unable to get the right data anyways. We already know that, so I wouldn't pay attention to that. Uh, but that, to me, that's a nice viable gap. If it looks like it wants to go higher, you put, you went tight sideways earlier in the week, and volume dried up. So that that's kind of what you want to see. Um, I like this uh, Sedge or Solar Edge Technologies. Uh, I think stock's probably building its first real base in here. Earnings come out, I believe. Let's see, next week. I'm not sure if these guys don't have a date yet. Um, some sources say 428, so that would be Tuesday. My guess is uh, you're not going to see anything bad on earnings. I think these guys are in the right space in terms of where they're positioned within the solar industry. As a, They make uh, optimizers, I guess, and storage devices for solar energy, and that's the big thing right now because that's also where Tesla is going with storing energy. So I think that's a big theme. It's going to be applied to solar, but also... It looks to me like the battery that Tesla is making, the home and business power battery or whatever, storage battery, uh, is geared towards replacing a generator. So if you have a power outage, having one of those batteries around all charged up would uh, help, help you out. I know on January 2nd, around here, we had some construction crew out, out on one of the main roads out here uh, hit a power line and took out the power all day on a Friday. And uh, fortunately, down in my office on the beach here in Playa del Rey, there was no, there was still power there, so I was able to hustle down there. But we were out of power for most of the day that day. It would have been nice to have one of those batteries. So I think Tesla's got 
potential that we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, watching this one, okay, you run up, and, and this is pretty unusual for an IPO because I think they came public at, um, Eighteen bucks, and they've just run up it pretty orderly. I mean, came out pretty much near the offering price, and has just steadily moved higher. And I know the institutional sponsorship is pretty strong. This so so what you have here, you get this little four four day, five day flag, and you bounce off the ten day on a pocket pivot. So you buy that. But what do we know about this? You don't buy strength in this market. So I don't. I really don't buy pocket pivots at all. Pocket pivots, if anything, give me a sign that something is strong, but I'll wait for it to pull back and set up a different way, either on a voodoo pullback, you know, volume dry up, EDU, voodoo, whatever you want to call it, pullback into a moving average. Now, what you have happen here is this fails, and you undercut the lows of this little flag. So I'm guessing this is where you're going to form the lows of a new base, and they come out with earnings. I may hold a 10% position into earnings on this one. Uh, I like the concept here. Data is very tight in here. You can see it was tight on uh, Monday right at the 50-day, and volume is drying up. It came off uh, pretty hard along with Salesforce, CRM. Workday got hit as well, and I think a couple others in this sort of enterprise uh, cloud space uh, after ServiceNow got pummeled on earnings. So that it came in with that. I was wondering, you know, is, this, is this bad for the stock that's now? You can see, isn't that wonderful? You had a pocket pivot here, and the next day, kaboom. Uh, although I'm I'm guessing maybe no actually I remember checking this during the day and it did have a pocket pivot but I'm sure a good chunk of this volume was after hours uh, when this thing got nailed but it, this is what brought down a number of these data was one of them I think CRM got hit that day as well that's uh, I think for last Friday or I'm sorry uh, no that that got hit on on Friday D data got hit on Friday as well I think that was the same day right check this yeah so they all got hit together what was another one I was looking at um, workday got hit same thing uh, but it's it's a little bit weaker so I'm wondering if this is shortable but data you know it, it gets hit and and in, you can see again you buy strength here and you get whacked so it just doesn't it doesn't work and we're in a different yeah. market environment you were saying Dr. K what yeah, on that now stock, um, you know, we never put it up because even though it had the volume, if you look at the pattern, right. it tends to be 50 day. It tends to be sloppy. The fundamentals are not quite uh, what we want to see, so it didn't pass pass uh, uh, pass muster really. Right. Um, and so, you know, your obviously your odds are greater that uh, something catastrophic might happen um, if things are not totally in line. So, you know, it, it pays to uh, focus purely on on. The best of the best. Yeah, and this is a sloppy name. It's been sloppy for a while. Um, I know because I played this a while ago. It ha it's actually moved higher, but in very sloppy fashion. So, anyways, it's trying to recover, but we'll see what happens. But in any case, I think data, you, you, this is a sign of strength that you like to see. Okay, and then the pullback. Now I start getting interested, okay, on the pullback. And I have to say, you know, my early training, th this is antithetical to my early training. My early training would say, oh, my God. Fail breakout, you know, get out of here, sell your position and run. But these days I see this and I go, okay, nice breakout, I'm not going near it. And then it pulls in, it's like, okay, ugly duckling. And we're drying up, holding at the 50-day, I'll buy the stock. Boom, 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 you come up. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is able to clear the 100 level eventually here, you know, maybe on earnings, which come out when? 5-7, uh, so that's May 7. Um, let's see, a uh, fire eye. I think if you're looking for a big money theme in this market, it's clearly going to be cybersecurity. And the way most of these names have traded, okay, Palo Alto Networks has been the big stock leader. Whoops, me letters in there. And it, it broke out, but I don't trust that. They've got earnings coming out. Um, let's see. I'm just going to update everything. They've got earnings coming out at the end of uh, May, so that kind of takes it out of earnings roulette land, and uh, that's, I think, good uh, a good thing. So so it's right now, you pulled back this morning a couple of bucks, you could have bought it if you wanted to. Probably better doing that than trying to uh, jump all over it yesterday near the close once you knew it was actually going to clear the breakout. I would say the 10-day line is where it should hold on any pullback. But cybersecurity is going to be the big theme. So Fortinet comes out 
these guys amazingly, and I'm surprised this thing has taken so long to hit my radar screen. What what made it hit was the uh, the gap up on Monday. Okay, so finally I'm looking at this thing. But if you look at it, it's actually been in an uptrend for a while, and earnings have not been so hot. Uh, over the last few quarters, but they're starting to turn into profitability. Uh, well, they've been in, in profitability, I'm sorry, but but uh, negative uh, earnings growth. But what you do notice is there are a lot of uh, institutions, mutual funds coming into the stock and have been for a while. So this is a leader in the in the space. They came out with earnings. So you're basically holding tight on the BGU, on the Bible Gap Up. Volume is drying up uh, today. Uh, like, well, you don't know yet. It's been drying up yesterday, so we'll see how we end up. Right now I'm showing plus 25% for this time of the day, which doesn't really mean anything because it's still early in the day. Stock's kind of hanging out. Uh, FireEye is another one, and this started to look a little grim on uh, last Friday. But, again, here's your strength, pocket pivot. You don't buy it. You could have waited for this pullback into the 50-day, and I, that would have been viable, I think. And then you might be sitting through this, or you could be looking at this once it turned on Monday, buying it back, and then it gaps out, and it's holding tight in here. And volume right now is running at about 31% uh, below average. So this thing doesn't want to uh, sell off. And I, I think this is, a, from a product standpoint, this is one of the leading names in the cybersecurity industry. And i got to think that with expectations pretty low here, uh, they're supposed to lose 51 cents, but huge sales growth, 150%. They've been doing triple digits for the last four quarters. Uh, this may uh, just simply go higher. And I'm thinking about next, I think it's, uh, let's check this real quickly. Update it here. Earnings come out. This is saying 4.30. Uh, which would be next uh, Thursday, I believe, and uh, O'Neill's saying five something. Five six. They're always wrong. What's up with that? I don't. I don't get it. It's. It's not like it's rocket science. You know, you find the report date. Um, yeah, and uh, Briefing.com says four thirty as well, but on um, my Wanda, which I'm sure MarketSmith for those of you who use MarketSmith is probably showing you. 4.30, uh, I'm sorry, 5, what are they showing there again? 5.6. Five, 5.6, five, so, so, you know, I don't understand. Okay, anyways, where are we? Uh, so Fortinet, Fire, the one thing I like about Fortinet is it's hanging tight and you don't have to worry about earnings roulette. FireEye looks good, probably a hold into earnings. Cyber has already had a big run, probably, if, you want, if you're up on it, you can hold it into earnings. I'm not sure... Uh, if I want to hold, hold through earnings. But it is forming a base here, and it's up, and it's more than doubled from the IPO. So, you know, this has got all the things Dr. K likes to see in terms of all that. And so it is, you know, definitely a strong candidate stock, but you've got a number of them in the group. And it could be like the solar stocks in 2007 when the whole group just went nuts. And, of course, there were the big stock leaders like First Solar and SunPower. And... Uh, they just had a monstrous move. So you're seeing this phenomenon again where you see a group all moving together. And for the most part, you look at these names and they're all just getting going. So, you know, if I, if I want to hold out hope for a big thematic uh, move in this market where you can make some big money, and I'm not talking about flipping back and forth for a couple of bucks and being up 5%, uh, which can disappear in a hurry from my perspective. I'm talking about something you can really sink your teeth in and jam up at least 50 to 100% on and <laughs> be able to margin the stocks. If I can't margin things, that really hampers me. Uh, and it screws up my buying power so much that other stocks I'm working get, it's, it just kind of screws up with everything. So the, that's been the disappointment for me with cyber. And I hope most of you out there have been able to margin it. Maybe I need to change brokers. Uh, let's see, continuing on, what else? We looked at Mobileye. I think Mobileye looks good. Uh, GoPro is trying to get going, but no pocket pivots. you got a five-day here, a five-day here, so it's maybe some clusters, but earnings come out next Tuesday, I believe. And there's a pile of shorts in this stock, and you look at the weekly chart, you're trying to come off below, so you're not really getting anything convincing in terms of volume. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to hold this into earnings myself. I've played it on the 
pullbacks and it goes up a buck or two and you can trade it, but that's about it. And uh, I'm not really willing to uh, sit with it through earnings unless it gets going from here. It's trying to. And it got some bad publicity a couple of days ago. I think CNBC was panning it uh, a couple of days ago. Also, I think on Monday afternoon, I remember I had the CNBC uh, on. And uh, don't ask me why. I, I don't know. I just had it on. And uh, they were bashing GPRO and saying that, Xiaomi, which is a Chinese company uh, that makes cameras like GoPros, copycat company, is priced a lot cheaper. So the, Xiaomi also uh, has made, the, they make the most popular cell phone in China. So they still, though, haven't been able to take out Apple and Samsung in the process, but their phone does outsell those. So can they outsell GoPro? Maybe, but uh, you know, in the same manner that it hasn't, spelled the demise for Apple or Samsung, their ability to, to reproduce those, these phones or make a popular phone. I don't necessarily know if the camera market uh, is any different. And, and I think the key here is how big is the potential market versus uh, how many entrants can come into it. So you get Xiaomi on the low end, you get GoPro on the high end. It, to me, that's kind of like Apple on the high end and, and Samsung or whoever the cheap phone makers are, Motorola, are they still around? Uh, you know, it, it, there's still plenty of room for growth overall. So it's not clear to me necessarily that GoPro is done. And with 18 million shares short against a float of 38 million, you have the makings of a short squeeze or, or as I like to say, a short smoothie. Um, so, you know, just put them in the blender and blend them up. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> Uh, we looked at Twitter, going nowhere. Tesla, I think, is a great, great trader. You know, I talked about this when it was in here. It got above the 50-day moving average on a viable gap up sort of bottom fishing pocket pivot. And we talked about this back then, if you recall. And remember that we were looking at, you got the three bands of uh, oversold bars in the base. So you got basically three to four waves down, depending on how you want to count. One, two, three or you can make this two in here, whatever you want to do. That, that You do have the essence of this, which is what I look for. Uh, and so you, you start coming off the bottom, and you pull, you run up a little bit from here. I thought it's buy, you buy here, sell here, you run up, and then you bounce back into the 20-day, the 65-day expansion, so this whole zone in here, which you, you're basically, I'm watching the volume on the pullbacks, and you can see it's drying up here. And uh, and here as well, and just just on this pull, so you buy it right here, and you get a nice three-day pop from about 206, 207 up to 220 yesterday. I sold it yesterday, and watching it this morning come in at 218, um, down a buck 44. It probably ne needs to pull in, and uh, earnings come out on May 6th, so you you gotta think about that. Maybe it goes nowhere. You know, maybe maybe I've gotten all the juice out of this. I'm going to get. Uh, a few drops, basically, and uh, and you see what happens after earnings. I do think that the new product does have some potential. Dr. K, you were saying? I, no, that was just my alert going off. Okay. Um, so, you know, the, maybe they're going to turn it around, and I don't know. And I'm not going to sit here. I, I've said Tesla is my short of the year, but, you know, a lot of times that's just tongue-in-cheek because you all know what I think about labels. Labels are BS. And trying to stamp a label on something in a very definitive and rigid way in the stock market just doesn't work, so I don't bother. Um, but, you know, it makes for stuff to write about, I suppose. Um, and I'm sure the media would love it if I was still going on TV, which I don't waste my time doing anymore. Uh, this thing looks like it's trying to turn. You can see on the HSI chart here that is what it's attempting to do here. So... Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm getting some uh, tips on using uh, HGSI. Thanks for that, you guys. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Uh, whoops. Grubhub is just hanging out. They come out with earnings um, in the middle of May, and it's it's trying to move higher, you know, but again, it's you have to buy it on weakness. Uh, this uh, Varent Solar moving higher. You had a pocket pivot breakout here. So this is a breakout, more or less. 
on a pocket pivot, but it's going higher. You know, and this is one of these little roundabout things, and it's in the solar group. So I think the solar group is is another strong area, and I think you look at the new developments in the solar group, and it's all this optimization and storage stuff that Solar Edge does. So, you know, I like. Uh, I like the sedge, so and I, I think you know I'll buy a little bit on this pullback and maybe hold it into earnings, because uh, you know if I buy 2,500 shares and it drops 20 points, it's not that much. Uh, I would like to see a better setup, but I like this stock and I like the fact that there's a lot of uh, sponsorship moving into it. SunPower also cruising higher. They come out with earnings. I think uh, is it today? Maybe let me see. It says 4.30, so that would be next week, um, next Thursday, I guess. And uh, they're hanging up there okay. You had a nice pocket pivot breakout here. So, you know, it's the big cup with Hannah. Solar, the solar group is trying to move higher. So the way I break it down is where are the more new merchandise type names and, and what is a hot concept that could catch fire if the whole group is doing well. So Solar City also uh, break out from this sort of weird little deep doo-doo cup with handle formation, whatever you want to call it. But this is another one. Let's look at it here. So, Scotty, you're saying if I just type up here, it doesn't matter where I am, I can bring it up. That's good. I knew there had to be something like that. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. I don't know. You get a couple of big groupings of the bingo bars, oversold bingo bars. It's trying to come up. Earnings come out on May 5th. Uh, if VSLR is moving, it's in the si similar space, the residential solar area, and I guess Solar City is doing some kind of fancy financing. It's the only thing that bothers me about this uh, these solar installation, you know, home solar installation, business installation type uh, companies. They rely a lot on subsidies, which are all going to go away at the end of next year. The uh, tax credit. Uh, and so that's kind of, it kind of bothers me a little bit with this group. So I prefer First Solar. I think it's the big name uh, leader in the group. And it's trying to go higher. Earnings come out on May something. I think it's, uh, no, next uh, Thursday. So we'll see what happens uh, at that point. But I like, uh, I like the sedge anyways, so. And I sold the last of my cyber art this morning and popped it up to about 66 and I just thought, okay, let's leave this alone. I'm going to focus on names like Fortinet, maybe FireEye, because I think they're in positions where they might have some nice moves here. I could be wrong and cyber art goes up to 80 from here, but that's what it looks like to me. So you play it as you see it. Uh, on the biotech front, you got eyes, you know. Extreme, extreme voodoo pullback into what's the 65-day exponential. But, you know, for practical purposes, call it the 10-week. Same thing. And it's moving up, and it looks like it wants to come off of here. So, you know, you gotta got to buy them when they're weak. You buy into the strength. Uh, you know, you buy this pullback, you buy this pullback. But buying them in, the, in this and this isn't going to make you uh, any money. So, you know, if you, if you buy them weak and they move up and they start to falter, at least you can bail out and maybe have a small profit. Uh, and and get out of there before something breaks down, and then look at buying it back on the pullback. But the thing here is, you're getting some extreme, extreme voodoo action here. So, you know, so it's a conceptual thing here, and uh, it's you know you can see it's looking like pretty good here, going code blue on the HGSI chart. So, um, loco. Let's just hanging out, pulling into the 10-day. Vasco data, you had the pocket pivot here, and so you pull into the 10-day. Earnings come out next Tuesday, though, so that, that's an issue. And then you dry up. That's that's acting okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes higher on earnings. Um, Starbucks comes out with earnings today after the close, I believe, and they're hanging out along the 10-day. So watch this one after the close. Baba is in a bear flag, as far as I'm concerned. It's starting to look like a head and shoulders top on the weekly. But earnings come out next week, and uh, you know th there's nothing really going on there. Uh, Skywork Solutions is, is shaking and baking over here, but it's holding. And if you look at it, you're holding along the 10-week line on the weekly chart, so it's hanging in there. So if you're long this one, and you're able to sit through that kind of stuff, I salute you, because uh, I sure as hell can't. That, that I see something like that, and it's goodbye. I'm out of here. I'll think, you know, I can think about buying it back 
on the pullback further. Uh, but I don't like this this kind of stuff. But with the uh, some of the semiconductor names like SanDisk, for example, coming out and talking about business slowing down sharply, um, you've had these breaks in semis. So that's been the risk in the semis. So speaking of semis, we've got. Amberella, probably one of the better ones because they do make these camera chips. So whoever makes these GoPro-like cameras, whether it's GoPro or some copycat like Xiaomi, these guys are going to make uh, the chips for it. And it's holding along the 20 days volume dries up. Earnings don't come out till the, till the end of uh, May. Is that right? Is that right, Dr. K? Did I get, did I get that right? Yeah. No, actually 6-2, so June 2nd. And so this thing could go higher from here. So I'm I'm kind of watching it pull in. Um, not too bad, but I'm up to my eyeballs in stocks like Mobileye. They pulled back this morning, and I loaded up on that. FireEye. They pulled back this morning, I loaded up on that. Um, Fortinet just hanging out. It looks okay. So this is another one I like, uh, which I think will probably do well. And earnings don't come out until early June, so you've got some time before you have to play earnings roulette there. Uh, Cavium is another one. I, you know, Gapson, I don't, I never have liked this name. It's just too unstable. Do you like this one, Dr. K, or is it just too... Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. It's got uh, a lot of volatility within the pattern, and so that increases your risk. I mean, you can just... The noise level is atrocious because it does tend to violate the 50-day routinely. So these kinds of stocks don't interest me in terms of uh, something that can maybe induce a good trend. Um, but on the other hand, you know, as we know, this is a, a different kind of market we're in. So, you know, when we see stocks like, you know, this AMBA that you just brought up, uh, you know, it's getting quiet in there with the volume and the price uh, tightness. And, you know, you, it looks like it's, gonna, it's setting up for some sort of voodoo action, voodoo day, and then um, followed by a pocket pivot. Um, and again, you know, there's some people who like to buy on strength, some people like to buy on weakness. This is a kind of market where buying on weakness is more conducive, but uh, again, you know, you pocket pivots are buying on strength and uh, overall in balance they can work very well as we've seen so you know I would say stick to stick to your your trading DNA whatever whatever that is um, but I do like AMBA because of the uh, the fundamentals behind the stock and the, uh, the strength overall you know across the board um, so I wouldn't be surprised for it to launch out of here uh, sometime in the near future Yeah, give me one second here. Just let's see. Um, let's see. LinkedIn. Let's see. Eh, you know, Facebook kind of flowering about. Where's Facebook now? It's down fifty-two cents. It's holding tight. Earnings come out next week. I'm not going to do anything with this one. Who knows what it does? Um, That's the thing about, you know, some of these big, you know, this call them the super cap names like uh, Facebook. Uh, they tend to, you know, Facebook's been a bit slow. You know, it, it's sloppy, slow. Yeah, it's out of pocket pivots. But, um, you know, I don't see this, this thing just streaking on out of here. Um, you know, these, these are yeah. the kinds of types of company. A big move is going to be made earlier on, and then um, and they become a bit stodgy in just the way they trade. And, uh, you know, you can see that pattern with LinkedIn as well. Uh, just doesn't really go anywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's partly because the, you know, the size of the company relative to its space um, doesn't give it a whole lot of uh, growing room. Um, you know, LinkedIn has a market cap of $32 billion, and But given, given its business model, um, you know, it feels, it feels to me like it's reaching sort of a saturation point. Yeah. Uh, Facebook. Similar kind of problem. It's a $235 billion market cap company. Uh, there's a lot of competition out there. It does what it does very well. So, you know, it, I'm not saying it doesn't deserve the $235 billion market cap, but is it really going to double from here? Is it really going to become a $470 billion uh, company? It, it seems unlikely unless they have some sort of killer app or killer strategy in the pipeline. Um, and uh, I have yet to hear of any such thing. Yeah, so that you know, and it looks that way in the chart too. Anyways, let's uh, go into the biotech area. Here's a pocket pivot on uh, Kithera Biopharmaceuticals, the chin fat people, and uh, 
that, that again, you, you see the volume uh, dry up on the pullback into the 20-day, and that's where you buy. You don't buy the pocket pivot. So, I mean, if you do, I guess you can sit through it, but I prefer to... I use this first as a, as a pointer in terms of telling me, watch this stock. And then I wait for the pullback, and this one would be uh, working pretty well here, actually. Uh, let's see, what else? And Trexon is hanging along the 50-day. They come out with earnings in a couple of weeks, and that's acting okay. The Zyop, you know, this this thing is trying to run up. This might have been premature, but, you know, these, these uh, what is it called again, Dr. K? The Cat C or something, cancer stocks. Um, I the car car Sorry. T or car T. That's it. C A R dash T. It's some technology for fighting cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they all got hit the other day on some news. So, yeah, but this it's is typical. very speculative at best. This is the problem. Yeah, because totally. The, the size and the price, and you know, it's very erratic in its pattern. Um, so it's you know when it had a gap up, you know, at you know a single digit price, and then it completely violates that and then uh, you know it it's a tough one it's a tough one to play so um, generally these are not in my, on my radar yeah and I, I would say all the biotechs are like look at the Juno you know it had a nice move so what you, you want to sell that right buy it back sell it buy it back sell it buy it back I don't know you know it's back to the 10 week line back to the top of the cup with handle the handle if you want to call it a one week handle on the weekly you know but that's that's yeah, the so biotech for you <laughs> yeah, uh, LCI just hanging out, uh, stoner stock, uh, GW Pharmaceuticals hanging out, acting pretty well. Earnings come out on this thing uh, pretty soon, right? 5-6, so May 6th. Uh, let's see. Gilead had a pocket pivot the other day. They came out with earnings, I think, today after the close. Is that right? So you got, I think them and Biogen and Celgene all come out. So notice Biogen is trying to stabilize. I wouldn't be surprised if it moved, you know, so here's the big gap up moving and it fails. Okay, so is that the end of the world? No, in this market, you know, in the old days I would say, yeah, that's terrible action. You want to get away from that stock. Uh, but these days, it's the ugly duckling and, and now it's holding tight along the 50-day line here, which more or less coincides with the 10-week and, you know, it's, it's holding in tight like it wants to come out. So I wouldn't be surprised if this thing took off after earnings. So... It's just the the way this market rolls, you know. Um, let's see. Should we go go to some questions? Uh, Amgen was another one. They came out with earnings, I think, on Tuesday, and it started up, but now it's come in. Uh, let's go to some questions real quick. Somebody says MS pattern rec shows sixty two ninety eight pivot point on cyber cup with handle. Um, yeah, I, you know, pattern recognition is for dorks as far as I'm concerned. If you can't see a pattern, then you shouldn't be trading. If you need something to tell you this is a pattern and that needs, and you need it to tell you here's the breakout point and here's the buy point, yeah, I think you're just a moron, frankly. But, you know, that's just me, so uh, I just don't understand the, the use of it. It's, it, it's like... Uh, I guess it's like mobile eye for investors, right, Dr. K? It's like, you know, you don't need to drive anything. You just sit there, and we'll do all the driving for you. I, you know, that probably works for cars, but I, I think in investing, it's kind of useless. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Well, the thing also is, is that, um, you know, the intelligence in the software is not, is not, is not uh, sufficient. No. You know, but, it can't really take into account all the different qualities. Um, and if it could... Then, uh, then it, if it worked, then uh, I suppose everyone could use it, and it would stop working on that basis, and patterns would change. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's never been something that, is, uh, that has that kind of neuro, uh, neuro power behind it um, in terms of that no, pattern. No, no, and I remember when they were first working on that project when I was there at O'Neill, and that was, you know, you got to remember that was ten years ago, and he had a bunch of PhD math guys trying to code this and. What what I what I what I saw yeah. well, from it was I that actually, um, Rajneesh, uh, head of programming and, and we sat together to see if there was a way to, to do it and that was that I think that was about 1997 or yeah. eight so almost years ago and we concluded that it's uh, you know it would be a very inferior way to go about uh, uh, doing it. it you know there's no substitute for the legwork involved in learning how to um, train your chart eye 
Yeah, and I think that's the key. And I think anything that is, where serves more as a crutch than anything else is useless. And it and all it does is make you weak. So, uh, and and the other thing is, but well, my understanding of that project, and that actually came to fruition after you had left Dr. K, and and they came out with the actual program. So we had suddenly we had uh, pattern recognition on Wanda, and which you'll notice on Wanda they don't have pattern recognition. I don't believe. And there's a very good reason for that, because what we notice is that, yeah, the computer sees 5 million cups with handles. But the, the thing I, I learned from that is that most cup with handle patterns taken solely on the basis of the technical pattern do not work. Surprise. Uh, so the idea that a cup with handles some sacrosanct formation that's going to work totally ignores the other relevant concepts of uh, fundamental context, thematic context, uh, status as a big stock leader, stuff like that. The stuff that is to some extent developed uh, or understood through judgment developed by years of experience. And so, you know, I, I'm not into overpriced crutches. If you like them, go for it. But it's not, I really can't uh, endorse that stuff. So somebody says, Solar Edge website says earnings call will be on 5-7. I like it. That's more like it. That gives me some time. Uh, somebody's talking about Mellanox. I got it up here. Uh, it looks interesting. They come out with earnings today, uh, I guess a couple of days ago, 445% increase in earnings. Next quarter, 121. So, and you're seeing actually an acceleration in sales going 4, 16, 34, 48% over the last five quarters, or four quarters, rather. So it looks like these guys are trying to come back into their game. Uh, let's look at a weekly chart. You can see it's been in an uptrend for a while. Let's take a, let's take a longer view here. It's trying to turn. I got to say, I like the numbers. Uh, you got a, a pocket pivot a couple of days ago on a breakout. It looks like it wants to go higher. I wish it were probably a bigger stock. 398,000 shares a day is what it trades, and I'm not. That doesn't really excite me. But you know, this looks okay. Uh, what do you think, Dr. K? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> the pattern's been nothing but sloppy, but the uh, clearly there's a, a fundamental shift going on in the company, and um, it looks like. Well, the fundamentals certainly are powering higher, and it's in a good industry group. Um, and so it, the odds favor that this breakout attempt may work. Um, I'm still a little bit uh, not, you know, completely jumping jumping on this one. I mean, it is um, it's a, on the smaller cap. It's not a small cap, but it's on the borderline of being a small cap. Yeah. So that makes me a little comfortable um, just getting on board. Um, I'd rather see this actually launch out of here and then. Uh, form some sort of constructive pattern, and then I would take it seriously. Um, and I mean, it's done it before, but not in not in a number of years. So I mean, and it really, since uh, over the last three years, it's just been this really like slow, stodgy, sloppy name. Um, so I'd like to see an example um, where it really does launch out of here. Then then I'll put it on my radar. Okay, Shake Shack. Somebody's asking about uh, what do you need to know. I've been talking about this one, uh, you know, on the pullbacks into the moving average. It's very volatile. So these guys lose money making burgers and shakes, which I'm not sure how you do that, but they have managed to do that. Maybe it's a big expansion thing, but apparently the market likes it. So, you know, it's up there. So why do you need to ask me about it? It's up there. It's above the 10-day. What do you want me to tell you? Can you figure out what they want us to tell them, Dr. K? No. It's just up there. Maybe you're. I know what it is, Scotty. You're. You're. Uh, you own it, and you bought it down here, uh, and you're gloating. Okay. And you're also asking me if I take a full position into a voodoo pullback or scale into it as it sets up. Um, I don't know. We had dinner together, didn't we? And we talked about all that. So I just load the boat if I like it. Yeah, but it's not a rule that I apply to every single voodoo pullback. It depends on the stock. If I think it's something that is thematically uh, a big deal, like the cyber, you know, and the pullback into the 10-day here, I'll buy as much as I can uh, if I like it. But it, there's, no, there's no rule about how I handle it. But I'm not the type of guy to scale into positions. So that's for grandmas as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Cuervo. Good old Jose, he's sucking. So, you know, another reason why you sell into these breakouts. He could have bought this breakout. I, I guess it's a cup with handle breakout. It runs up, and that's the all she wrote. Yelp, Yelp me. It's trying to turn around, but I don't know. This thing's looking like big gap up. It's just moving above the 50-day. It doesn't really get me excited. 
So maybe that means it's going higher. Why, why? Why, oh why would you want to buy? Why, why? I don't, I don't know. It's, you know, you got one, two, three waves down. Okay, so maybe that's a positive thing here. Uh, let's take a look at the bingos. What do we got? You got three bingos here. So, you know, that's probably what you're seeing, right? And you got some pocket. Maybe it's trying to turn. I, I can't say that the fundamentals are bad. You like this one, Dr. K? Well, you know, it's it was an interesting uh, while back, but uh, not not really since. I mean, it looks like it's uh, trying to trying to turn a corner here on technicals. I mean, it had a good earnings report uh, back in March, and yeah. then it had another really strong update. But um, no, I, I mean, it, it's just again, it looks to me like it's a bit no man's land. You know, the fundamentals are strong and everything, but I want to see it uh, prove itself uh, on a technical basis before I get interested in uh, in doing anything with it. Well, I would say it's got all the things I would look for on a turnaround. Earnings are coming up on May on uh, May fourth, and so you know it's probably more an issue of what happens on earnings. So, but it does have that it does have that look to it, you know, where it's trying to form a bottom, and you've got the three ways. I'll, I'll look at that, Dr. I buy these things all the time, and they do pretty well. I think I mean in this kind of environment you can you can look at the volume dry ups in these kinds of patterns and you know if it gets real quiet in there um, you know they are they do become actionable um, and there's nothing wrong with that um, certainly so you know in other words it opens up the universe to a whole bunch of uh, stocks that you, one might not actually have under consideration normally but then the issue is of course if that's not what if the person's used to trading um, then what do they do with the stock and right. they sell it and all these thing issues come into play. Um, meaning that they might end up, you know, losing money on a position that could have been won. Uh, let's see. Infineon is another. Okay, well, they came out with earnings, and we're going to move higher, and they came in. I noticed today, what's AFOP doing? They tried to move higher today on earnings as well. These are all these old fiber optic companies. Infineon is one of them. Uh, you also have, what are, what are the other ones? Um, Finisar, not really doing so well. JDSU not doing so well, hanging in there. Juniper, so the whole group you know, in uh, Infineon has been sort of the outlier. I think that one and Apop's trying to come around again, but not you know. Again, you buy strength, and now maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe you buy it here on the pullback. So volume is running about 18 percent above average for this time of the day. So can't say it's terrible. So MNST tight action. Yeah, it's pretty tight. What is, when did they announce earnings? Middle of May. So, yeah, it's tight. So, buy it. Pocket pivot here. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Apple is hanging in there. They come out with earnings next Monday. So it's acting okay. It broke down below the 50-day, but these days we know that doesn't matter anymore, and it didn't violate so because it didn't move below the low of this day. So it turns right back, right, right back around. Volume is a little lower, and it's just cruising higher. So with this one, you know, you're just playing earnings roulette going into earnings, and you hope that uh, they came out, come out with something really strong like everyone probably expects, kind of like with Facebook. Um, but Facebook is now down below 84 again, so they, it doesn't know what it wants to do. Uh, let's see, JD is another one. JD is doing fine. It's holding in tight. Um, you know, we talked about this one as it was coming up and around, and uh, you know, it's come. It had a big cup back then. It IPO runs up, comes in and uh, forms a cup and you, you can see that you're getting support off the lows of the cup here on some big volume all the way around the bottom so that's that's what I like to see and then as I start seeing this start to perk up and you see the overall colors here are turning bluer on my indicator bars uh, and now it's hanging in tight so it looks fine and earnings are coming up when are earnings due? it doesn't show here anybody know? any of you in highly informed people out there who know. Let's see, go to the website. We know that suspect, 428. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that uh, O'Neill, if they don't know the date, they just go and throw that up, 428. That's the well, magic. That's right, because the last time they reported was on the 3rd of March. Yeah. So 428 seems a bit 
uh, quick. 511, everybody says. Okay. Somebody email HGSI and tell them to put that up on the chart. So that's going to wait a while to go, but it's, that stock's acting pretty well, and they're taking out Baba from what I hear. Oh, oh yeah, another one we need to talk about is GoGo. I, I, this you got to buy on the pullback. I bought this on the pullback here. You know, here again, you're buying it along here on the uh, at the 10-day. I talked about this during one of the webinars a couple of weeks ago or a week ago. No, a couple of weeks ago probably. And uh, the pullback again on uh, was this Monday. Yeah, that that was Bible. I bought some. I sell it into the move higher, and now it's probably just going to funk around for a while. I said funk, F-U-N-K, just so you know. Uh, May 7th, they come out with earnings. Uh, let's see, any other exciting questions? Um, here's this MDXG. It doesn't want to go anywhere. Another cheap, cheesy biotech. I mean, you know, I hate these names. They're just, they don't, they, they're incoherent sometimes. When they run up, they're beautiful and you damn well better sell into it when you have it. And uh, when they blow up, it's not so beautiful. So well, the, the the sparks and the flames are beautiful, but the price action isn't. But uh, you know that's just the way of the world. Uh, Amazon comes out with earnings uh, today after the close, so something to watch. It's actually acting okay. You get a pocket pivot here. So what are they gonna? You know what's what's gonna be happening? I think Amazon should move into cybersecurity. Then they don't have a big move, but you know. This thing's been going sideways for a while. Looks like I froze up. Can you hear me, Dr. K? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, it looks like my screen froze up. Okay, there we go again. I'm not sure what that's been happening. I got to think it has something to do with the Internet connection coming up to my office upstairs because it's a Cat5 running through the walls. Maybe there's a mouse biting on it. I don't know. I'll have to find out. Uh, in any case... How does Lulu look to you on this volume, volume drop? I don't know. I own a pair of their yoga shirts. Somebody bought them for me for Christmas a couple of years ago. I don't really care much for you. If a gap down, a gap up, drops in, I, it doesn't really excite me. I like Skechers. Bible gap up. What's your low on the day? 81.89. You're trading way too far up there. But it's a nice thought nevertheless. So, um, Any other questions before we wrap it up? Gimo Throwback Thursday. Gigamon. Well, it's trying to come up, coming around, you know, up and around on the weekly. You can see that. Let's take a look at it over here. Um, acting okay. Earnings come out what tomorrow? Today? Did they come out today? No, tomorrow, right? No, today. Today's the twenty third. Get it right. Okay. No, they're not out yet. Probably after the close. So, I guess watch earnings after the close. They're not out yet, are they? Somebody says, Apple about to have earnings could push the whole market higher. Yeah, and if my aunt grows testicles, she'll become my uncle. So, I don't know. That, they could. I, I don't think it necessarily has to. Facebook isn't going higher, and the market seems to be acting just well without, just fine without Facebook. And that's probably good. You, did you say something there, Dr. K? I heard you spewing something. Uh, no, I was just, I just made a, made a comment. Okay. A comment. On Gimo? Actually, you know, the, the, the Apple thing, you know, I was, uh, I, I said, I was going to say this earlier, but, uh, you know, it poked below the 50-day, but that was also in context of the market that had gapped down. Right. So that is another forgivable. Um, that wouldn't be forgivable if, say, the market was up strongly that day, then you kind of have to wonder what's going on with it. But anyway. Right. It looks to me like, you know, not a whole lot of action in the stock today. Who knows how earnings are going to fare with this one. Um, that said, uh, ev actually, every the last four earnings have been uh, favorable for the stock, so we'll see. Yeah, this is a seven hundred billion dollar company. Pretty amazing. It is. Is it going to get to a trillion? Maybe it will. I don't know. That, somebody says the Apple Watch will rule the world. Maybe it will. I mean, I, I got to admit, I didn't think much of the iPad when it first came out because uh, it just looked like what I used to call a big smudge machine, where you just get all smudgy. And if you look at my uh, kids, uh, they're teenagers, you look at their iPads, it's like it has a layer of, of like finger oil on the whole thing. I am anal retentive, however, I keep mine extremely clean, and I'm usually cleaning it every every hour or so. That's how anal I am. So, uh, And I have, you know, iPhones and iPods and iPads. I still have an iPod, 
believe it or not, and iPads, and uh, no iWatch yet, though. But who knows? I might find a use for it. If they can put really good stock quotes on it, maybe they got me. Anyways, um, somebody says, I think the term watch is a misnomer. It'll do much more than, well, we know that. So, of course, it's going to do much more than tell time. It better. Otherwise, it's kind of an, ex well, maybe not that expensive of a watch. Uh, I remember when I was at Merrill Lynch in Beverly Hills way back when there was one of the one of the rookie brokers. He was a collector of watches, and so we would walk out on Rodeo Drive after the market closed and go look at the watches. Uh, the ten thousand dollar. What's the brand that everybody buys? Actually, what's like the hip brand for all the rich people to buy? Timex. Well, <laughs> no, not really. Rolodex. The, the Rolex is um, Rolex. kind of Rolex. That's kind of very Rolex. U.S. Oh, Rolex yeah. is what you use. And a tag, tag, tag Ho Hoyer, um, that's always been kind of like one of those upscale brands. I use Timex once. I don't wear one. Like. <laughs> Who needs a watch? I just look at the sun. I, I, I carry a stick with me and a, and a compass, and I stick it in the ground. I can tell time that way. Anyways, that's all we've got. <laughs> M&K boomerang off the 50-day. Is that a question or an answer? I don't know. It's trying to hold up. I don't know. That doesn't thrill me. I, again, I'm just going to finish off with this one idea. And that is what I've noticed when I make big money in the markets in the past, when I have, whether it's a QE market or not, the key, the, the key thing is to grasp onto a theme, a big money, big stock theme, because that's what will drive moves in the market. Solars, internets, uh, you know, smartphones. I mean, you go back and, and you look at all the big moves and all the big leaders. Uh, Tesla, electric cars, okay, stuff like that. So you you look for the big stock, big money theme, okay. When you're thinking about these, so everybody wants to look at every nice, pretty looking pattern, every pocket pivot. But the real question and the thing that I always get back to is the is the big stock principle. And we, you know, we talked about this over and over again, but that's really the issue here. So think about that when you're trying to figure out what to buy, and maybe you can sit with some things. I'm trying to do that as we move through earnings season, uh, find some stocks that I think will benefit from a big stock, big money theme, and run it from there, because that's how you make big money, bottom line. Anyways, you got anything, Dr. K? That's it for me. We're good on this side. All right, you guys, have a great uh, rest of the week, and have a great weekend. We'll catch you next week. So long, everyone.